Hi everyone and welcome to the video on sampling. This is the introduction to the sampling process and then there are two videos about the two main types of sampling methods. So in terms of sampling itself, it's the process of selecting units or people from the population of interest. And notice I say units or people because if you recall back to the units of analysis video, we talked about how um, units can be people, groups, communities, cities, um, or organizations like social movements, etc. So the sampling methods that I'm going to go over involve or can involve not just people but uh, other units of analysis as well. One way to think about uh, the sampling process is to think of the various groups that will be involved that I'm about to, to go over. So there's a series of questions that we can ask to get down to who is actually in the study. So the first question is, who do we want to generalize to? So at the end of the day, when we have our study's findings, who do we want to say these studies, this study's findings apply to? This is referred to as the theoretical population. And it's called theoretical because we very rarely have access to an entire population um, of people or organizations or what have you. Uh, in some very limited cases, um, we may have access to a population. Like, for example, if there are only a few hundred current clients at an agency and we're interested in understanding something about those clients, then we may be able to survey that entire population. But in most cases, we don't have that kind of access. So we have to ask, ask ourselves, ourselves, what population do we have access to? And in our case here in LA, it might be uh, some populations in LA. So let's say I'm interested in teenagers in America as my theoretical population. I may only have access to teenagers in Los Angeles because that's where um, we are located. So then we have to, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> and this is referred to as the study population, the population that we have access to. And then we ask ourselves, how can we get access to that study population? And most of the time, this involves some sort of record keeping or, or record management system. Like, for example, if I was interested in teenagers in LA, I may have to get permission to access school rosters, high school rosters um, in the LA area. But in any case, this listing of people and potential participants is referred to as the sampling frame. And then from the sampling frame, we have to, to figure out who is going to be in the actual study. And who ends up being in the study is referred to as the sample. So when we're talking about the sampling process, we're talking about going from the study population or the sampling frame to the sample um, in, that will end up being in the study. So the methods that I'll be go over, going over in video, uh, videos one and two after this uh, will be about that process going from the study population or the sampling frame to the actual people who um, are in the study. Um, the reason this process is important is because of this term here, external validity. I'll define it in a second, but let me just kind of uh, backtrack a little bit back to the previous slide. So we have this theoretical population that we're interested in. And from that, we uh, go up through some process to get our actual sample. There's a sampling process involved, and at the end of the day, we have our sample. The external validity question is the extent to which the findings from the study using just that sample can be generalized back up to that theoretical population or to other people, places, and times. Sometimes we do refer to this as generalizability. How well can we say that the findings from this sample can be applied to the larger theoretical population? And the answer to this question depends on the type of sampling uh, method that is used by the researchers. 
Just a quick note on sampling and statistics uh, versus parameters. Uh, I mentioned this briefly in one of the other videos, but I want to make sure to just really explicitly go over it here. So what I want to talk about is the difference between statistics and perimeter, perimeter, parameters between big N and little n. So generally speaking, when we're uh, writing or talking about a sample, we use little n. And any information that's produced about that sample um, is referred to as statistics. So if I say 80% of my sample were female, then that 90, I'm sorry, that 80% is a statistic. When it comes to populations, um, we use big N and any information that's produced is referred to as a parameter. So if I were to say 80% of this particular population is female, that 80% is a parameter, it's not a statistic. Statistics estimate parameters. So this goes back to that generalizability question. So if I say 80% of my sample are female, and I've used a particular sampling method that is likely to assure good external validity, good generalizability, then that statistic of 80% is a good parameter estimate. It is a good estimate of what the proportion of females is in the population of interest. Oh, I just said that. Statistics are parameter estimates. Sorry. Okay, but you have it in words. Okay. So there are two types of sampling method, methods, two major categories. There's what's referred to as probability sampling, which uses some form of random selection, and non-probability sampling, where selection is systematic or it can be haphazard, um, but it's not random. So the key word here that you can see is this word random. One involves random methods and the other does not. Uh, random, uh, randomness, when it comes to uh, selecting a sample, ensures that, um, generally, ensures that the sample is a good representation of the population because everyone in the study population or that was on the sampling frame has an equal or known chance of being selected to be in the study. So any individual differences essentially wash out. But sometimes, depending on the research question and the population, it's not possible to get a random sample. And then we um, use non-probability sampling methods. OK, so that's it for this um, little mini introduction to sampling. Please go on to uh, sampling methods uh, in terms of probability sampling, which is part one of the next video series. Thank you.